The animal of the day, March 10th, is the extinct Titanoboa or the binomial name Titanoboa serajonensis. Type, boa, diet class, piscivory, average lifespan, possibly 20 to 30 years, length, up to 47 feet or 14.3 meters, diameter, approximately 3 feet or 91.4 centimeters thick at widest point, weight, around 2,500 pounds or 1.1 metric tons. Population status currently the 10th of March 2025, extinct. Population estimate, none, extinct. Native lands, modern day Colombia. Primary habitat, the tropical rainforests of the Seregion Formation. Main predators, none, apex predator. Active time, likely diurnal. Species age, emerged approximately 60 million years ago and extinction occurred 58 million years ago. Notes. The Titanoboa is an extinct species and the only member of its genus of giant boy that lived during the Middle and Late Paleocene epoch and is the largest snake to have ever existed. However, the recent discovery, 2020 for recent, of Vesuki Indicas could potentially beat, if not rival, the Titanoboa in length, with current estimates being between 36 and 50 feet or 10 to 15 meters in length, but of course, over time measurements may change. The Titanoboa was first discovered in the early 2000s by the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, along with students from the University of Florida who recovered 186 fossils of the Titanoboa from the Seregion coal mines in the La Guajira Department of Northeastern Colombia. The Titanoboa is a part of the subfamily Boine, being most closely related to other extant boids from Madagascar and the Pacific. The Titanoboa evolved following the extinction of all non-avian dinosaurs being one of the largest reptiles to evolve after the cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. It was initially thought that the Titanoboa acted much like a modern anaconda based on its size and living environment, with researchers suggesting that it may have fed on the local crocodile larf fauna, however, in the 2013 abstract. Head of the University of Toronto Jason J. Head and colleagues noted that the skull of this snake displays multiple adaptations to a pisivorous diet including the anatomy of the palate, the tooth count and structure which is not seen in any other boids but it does closely resemble the modern day Canfidian snakes with a pisivorous diet. In the 2009 type description, Head and colleagues correlate the gigantism observed in the Titanoboa with the climate conditions of its environment. Since it is a poikilothermic ectotherm, with its internal temperature and metabolism having been heavily dependent on the ambient temperature, which would in turn affect the organism's size. However, this hypothesis has been disputed and counter-argued in saying that the temperature of tropical rainforests did not change from the Paleocene epoch to today. And that if this were the case, animals such as the Megalania would be much larger than what was calculated and that the Komodo dragon would then be much larger than how it is today. And that therefore it was instead the lack of significant mammalian competition that resulted in the Titanoboa's large size. It was also argued that if the temperatures were as what had proposed, then the large size of the Titanoboa plus the high temperatures would mean that it would overheat easily when resting in a coiled-up state. Since thermal equilibrium is achieved through the relation between volume and surface area, but of course, there are still several key factors to consider about the relationship between the Titanoboa and the environmental temperature such as varying posture to help cool down if needed and basking behavior or heat absorption through the substrate are still unknown concepts and the potentially semi-aquatic nature of the organism adding additional factors to this correlation. In response, Head argues that Komodo dragons are a poor analogy as they are geographically restricted to the islands of Indonesia, limiting the size they could grow to, while both green anacondas and the Titanoboa are mainland animals and, in addition, had responded that the size estimations utilized for the Megalania were overestimates and unreliable, being based on secondary reports that do not match better supported estimates. 
Every day is a new animal, so subscribe for more.